Hello and welcome back to another episode of Letting Them Lead with myself, Marie Muratala, my mom, Laurie Cook. We're talking all about how we let them lead in early childhood education to foster engagement and enjoyment in the classroom. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> We're trying to get the chairs down. Today we're going to talk about visuals, and the reason why is because I think it was our last episode or two episodes ago. I can't remember. Not sure. I don't know. We were talking, we got on the tangent of visuals, and then I wrote down that we wanted to talk about them, but something really cool happened since, because I emailed you the core board that I've been using, mm -hmm. and I was actually singing your praises today with my, my other preschool SLP colleague. We were talking about just how we want to see some of the things that we do in preschool happen in, in transitional kindergarten classrooms. Wouldn't that be awesome? And I was like, well, technically my mom's doing it, so... Oh, I don't know why I heard kinder. Just No, it's... you, transitional kinder, you. Because, Me. Yeah. Because the way it works in our district <coughs> is they they start, you know, some, not all students, but some a lot of our students will start in preschool in the preschool program, whether they're in general education or they have an IEP, but they're in our full inclusion preschool program. So they're all in the same classroom. Mm -hmm. And then we transition them on to either transitional kinder or kindergarten. So they go to you or they go to a kindergarten classroom, which is the next grade level, depending on their age and when they're birth, blah, 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 blah. So because transitional kinder now is kind of the first year of elementary school, like it's still optional, though. It's still optional, but, like, all elementary schools have TK, whereas preschool wasn't something that all elementary schools in our district had until last year. Um, so, it, yeah, I, I don't know. Preschool's just, I mean, it, it's a whole different world. There's a whole different program that we do. Our whole, you know, we have that full inclusion world. preschool program, whereas when they go to TK and kinder, you know, we're looking at different placement options versus coming from just one place where all the kids are. So um, it's cool to get to talk about things that, you know, we've collaborated on in our own just, you know, just because we're mother and daughter way. Fellow educators. And fellow educators, but it's like I come home from work. Well, not home. This is where I live. But, you know, after work hours or on weekends when right. we see each other, I'm like, oh, I was using a core board. And you're like, what's a core board? I want to try that. Like, because we have that early intervention, early education right. side of things. But not all T, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not going to every TK teacher in the district. Like, you should right. try this because right. I'm working with the preschool teacher. Well, here's the thing. We don't, we don't have tons of training in that department. Yeah. So it's so valuable because when you have children that aren't speaking even clearly or whatever their stuff, whatever's going on, if you have all these different um, things to put into their world, then you're helping them yeah. before they're told they, that you need to put that help. It's response to intervention. Yeah, yeah. it's just a way of promoting that growth without... It's just good practice. Well, you know, to exactly. It's that whole idea of it's just you're providing an accommodation or an That's intervention. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Yes. In, yeah. I know exactly where you're going because yeah. we, we kind of do that like in the preschool program because like for me, my role in preschool is as the speech pathologist, I do a lot of very heavy collaboration and co-teaching in the preschool classrooms. I go in to my different preschool classes and the days I'm there, I'm running centers, I teach right. part of the circle time lesson, I also am making sure I'm individualizing my, my like push-in services right. for specific students, and then I'm talking with the teachers and providing that modeling, I'm providing, you know, the supports and um, problem solving as we mm -hmm. go and different things, and so... Mm -hmm. But you have specific tools that you've studied and you understand the, the what's behind those tools yeah. that general educators don't always get. We take one class maybe in special ed. Sure. And if you don't actually have children to work with, it you just don't even probably remember. And it's so important to right. have your uh, profession out there to help us. But right. we don't always even know what to ask for. No. Oh, my gosh. that's a, I mean, that's a, that's a really good point. And um, I think that 
Ugh, gosh, that just makes my brain think of so many different tangents that I need to pick one <gasps> and just go with it. But no, I mean, I it, that's exactly it. And so when you are given those supports or you have even like a quick training on how to maybe modify for specific language goals, like if right. you have students that are working on you know, different grammar functions or right. different vocabulary or whatever. Like, you know, right. okay, when I'm working with this student, how can I provide supports that help him or her access their curriculum? And so one of those supports, a huge one in this early early stage of language for our preschoolers and transitional kindergartners is the, are those visuals. Because, I mean, we, we've talked about this a lot, just how when, like, oh, that was what we talked about, setting up their environment. And, like, in, in these early education classrooms, like, part of that environment is having cues. And lots of those cues, most of the time, they should be visual cues because they They help. don't read. Well, they They're, don't read. Most of them aren't reading yet. But so. they're also helping them know what to expect in their day right. or what to expect when they go to that part of the classroom. Like, well, just a quick example, putting those real pictures of the toys on the bin that those toys go to. Right or belonging. exactly, um, or even you know, like washing your hands. A mm -hmm. visual about how you do that. Get the soap, you know, and then the steps, the sequence, the sequence. And but those those also make a child feel safe because yeah. then they know. And then guess what? They get to do it without being asked because they already know. They can see the picture. It builds their confidence. Exactly. And they're independent. Exactly. Absolutely. Which promotes the language, you know, even if they say, I did it. Yeah. Or look, you know, or th which they do. We set our environments up to have those, those things that we know make life easier for the students. Mm -hmm. um, and something I just thought was so cool when you, um, last after our last podcast, you know, we talked and you had me email you the, the core, board. core board, the core words board that I, I've i been using with my kids. And what's cool about that, you know, especially you'll, you'll find this out next year when you get um, kids that are coming from our preschool program in your class, they're going to be very used to that specific one because that's the yeah, one they got to help awesome. build. And the thing about giving kids access to those core words, and we talked about this too, is that those are words that they're going to use throughout throughout their Life. variety. Well, even in their in each moment of communication, you right. know, the variety of communicative things, the functions that we do if we're requesting, we use the words that are on there for want, mm -hmm. more, all done. If we are protesting, yes, no, like um, if we're describing, there's words on there for big, small, like all mm -hmm. of those core words that help us access our needs and wants mm -hmm. quickly are on there, mm -hmm. um, or most of them, I won't say all of them, but it's just really cool to provide that because in the speech and language world, as I learn more, you know, we're talking a lot more about how important it is for kids to be able to be total communicators because at every any given time and we know this as adults like aren't there moments where we are maybe so emotional that verbal speech is just like not mm. a thing like <laughs> yeah you're just you just show it through your facial expressions yeah. you might put a hand up right and tell yeah. somebody not right now you just and can't come up with the words you just exactly so if you think about a student that maybe even more so has some barriers to the verbal speech aspect, whether it be physical, whether it be because there's an, a mental overload, um, having that access to visuals is so awesome. And whether you're in a full inclusion classroom or general education classroom, mm -hmm. you know, a special education classroom, like it's it's really cool to get to to collaborate and like hear that like oh I emailed you the core board and the next day you projected it. I didn't even think to do that by the way. Oh yeah. Um, that was cool cuz I knew it wasn't big like you made it huge. Like yeah. we we have a how big would that be? Like our core board is like well, your each picture maybe is 5 a four by, by 4. It's okay, a 4 by 4. four. So, 4x4 four four times 40. Yeah, that's a big one. It's big. It's on a poster board, but like you put it on the big projector. Yeah, a big screen. We have that big computer I didn't screen. I think to do that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So they how like cool that. is that? Like that I learned something. That's why I like what, yeah. Like, that's why this and is that's good. why it's like, yeah, I have a specialty in speech and language and I go into these classrooms, but like it's so important for me to stay open-minded. Even if I have to listen to my own mom to learn something. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> 
But seriously, that it wasn't was cool. Because I mean, that I, hasn't happened since what five years old. I know, I know. So I, but I, you know, it's cool to tell like my friends at work, like, oh, like if you guys ever lose it, like just project it. I told one of the teachers that she's like, I didn't even think of that. I'm like, I know. <laughs> it's just that our, I don't have a lot of room in my makeshift classroom. See, and see what comes of that, though? Like, yes. you get creative. Yes, you do. <laughs> Boy, have I ever. But, so, yeah, mine are the little 8x10, 11 well, uh, so what's the sheet of paper? I do that, too. We have those printed, and I put one on each of the classroom doors, so that way, you know, we can work on things like go, stop, yes, no, as you're exiting the classroom. Mm-hmm. I put one of those 8 by 11 and a half in the play centers. So mm-hmm. that way they have access to that in their place under it's stapled on the wall. Yeah, I have it too. Um, you can in always tape one on each center table, oh, like, yeah. or you don't have to tape it, but you can have one accessible, like, if you have draw, like, some teachers have the carts at each center table with all mm-hmm. the materials, you could put one in there. Um, just, you know, just so they're always accessible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's just cool. It's cool that, you know, we... You know, I think it was very validating for one specific child in particular that really has had a challenge, you know, and he knows that he's having this challenge mm-hmm. because we have to stop and really try to speak. But I think when I posted it up there and I said they're all around the room, so when you're with your friends and you don't understand them, bring them over to this to these pictures and see yeah. if they can show you what they need. Yeah. Um, but we went over a few of them, and um, I don't know. It seemed like that was a magical time because it really was validating that, gosh, you're doing something that helps me. Whether yeah. they can articulate that in their mind, I doubt, but they think they it just in know. different words. They just know. They just and, know. I, I know exactly. But it, just what you seeing mean. those boards is a safety feature for them, a security, like, wow. You know, I can, if I need it, it's there. It's there. It's accessible. That's, that's the biggest yeah. piece. Yeah. Um, I had, it, it, cause you also have to look at too, like sometimes those visuals, we don't, we don't realize like how much they help our students that maybe have a little bit more of those receptive language delays or just a more challenging time to understand directions, like the basics, right? Mm-hmm. And the other day I had a student where he was asked to clean up. That was the direction given. Clean up, like help clean up. And he wasn't. He just wasn't. He got up and went and did something. And the teacher kept saying, you know, come clean up, come clean up. And so we brought over a visual and said, we pointed to all done because cleanup's not on there. But the thing about those visuals, when you have the core words, there's always a way to make it work for you. Um, and so, you know, I pointed to all done. I said, we're all done. We got to clean up. And as soon as I pointed to that and that visual helped that receptive language piece, there was, it was like not instant regulation, but he was able to kind of calm his body because he started to get really like um, wiggly um, because I think he was getting stressed out that the teacher was putting a lot of demands on him by, by repetitively saying clean up. And clean up also can be a trigger for some kids, right? Well, you here's know? what I was thinking. Can I add? Can I jump yeah. in? Um, a specific there's three Legos on the floor. Please put oh, them yeah. in the box and then go to your core board in, in, you know, yeah. whatever. But if you give him one little specific task, sure. it's not so overwhelming. No, a hundred percent. But I, I came in at the point where there, it, it, he had already like evacuated the scene. Like sure. he was because like, he was no, already overwhelmed. no, he was already overwhelmed. So I came in and just said, we're all done. And he saw all done. And that helped kind of let him know, oh, okay, so I understand, because he understands what's expected when you're all done. You clean up. And yeah. as soon as he was shown the visual, he came right. over. Right. But you're right, and something I have done before is, like, point to, you know, we're going to put them in, let's pick three pieces. Right. That's, like, a huge, I, you know, and I And they have, get to choose, they're doing the task, they do. Yeah. but they're choosing which ones they're going to pick up. Yeah, I had yeah. a... I, I probably learned this from being an aunt. This wasn't this wasn't something. And after like seven years in preschool, I this didn't click. It should have. But I the other day was working with some kids, and I said, "Okay, it's time to clean up." Like, um, you know, and they weren't listening. I said, "I want every friend to pick up three toys and put them in the bin. And once you do three toys, you can go line up." Mm-hmm. And they did it. Mm-hmm. And I and that's that's I've learned from the little one, the squish, yeah. because the she. Squish. I don't know if, if they want me to say her name on here, but yeah. um, um, she she's like that, you know, where it's like, 
I get it. You have to make a game out of it. <laughs> you do. Or, or give the, but like you said, give the specific. Like, Be specific and then please anticipate that that happened last time as your, as the teacher, as the adult. Prevent it. Now that you know, it's harder on that child when you say clean up. Yeah. Now that you know, it's really beneficial to everybody to give them a specific task. Yeah. Right? Or you know? include, or, and, yes, and or include a visual too. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. that's because some of our kids, especially, I mean, not just especially in the early in, early language or early education stage, like there's a lot of times where kids need those visuals and we just sometimes, what was the word I used the other day? I was explaining this to Mark and I said, sometimes I feel like individuals that have cert, maybe they're a certain age or they are at a certain level of communication other things get overlooked and we forget that there are going to be moments where they need those supports even we like I said earlier even we in moments of distress need those mm -hmm. different supports or we need an, a way to communicate something without it being verbal or a way to understand something you know like mm -hmm. without it being a verbal direction um, so we just can't bypass everything we have to be willing to like pull <coughs> out all the all the things and mm -hmm. I don't know one time as an adult, uh, I was having a pretty negative moment. I was having a hard time at a certain, just a certain situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a very weepy time for me. I didn't have it completely together yet. And I, I walked into um, my school office and one of my coworkers, who isn't one that I work with directly very often at all, but she, you know, we know of each other. And she said, you look like you just need a moment and she says let me let me do this let's look at this space mm. let's just stay right here I, I mean it was an amazing moment for me mm -hmm. I have the chills because like I said we, we we're not buddies no you know we're co-workers that don't see each other very often but she cared so much and this is a visual oh, she yeah. asked me to put my thoughts in the box and just breathe and just for, I'm gonna cry just for her taking that time for me and giving me that I use it all the time yeah but she you know here's yeah. another visual that Marie taught me well is it, this a visual or a strategy this is a strategy but it's visual watch yeah watch. I have a thought but somebody's talking so you hold it it's my favorite you should see all these four and five year olds doing this they're like this I think no. I taught you that like, <laughs> as an adult. Like before I was even, <laughs> but I think I was in like my mid twenty. Like I wasn't even graduated yet, and I just remember us like eating dinner, and I was trying to tell a story, and you're like, bleh, bleh, I know, and I said, Mom, like, Dad, Mom, but I've if you have a thought, put it in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hold your thought. I don't know where I got that. I guess I must have been, like, taking graduate school classes at that I point. Because so. I had, like, that strategy. Like, yeah, you I had was that so mindset. enthusiastic well, to yeah. try it out. And it's it still worked. Mom. It worked on my if mom. If it works on my mom, it'll work everywhere. It did. <laughs> hey, I, and you know what's funny is I can't get away with that with some of my three-year-olds, though. No. We the do. Whole hold your thought You know thing. what? It's, it's. Because, you know, they all want to answer stuff at once, and you'll yeah. never get through a story. And you don't oh, want to discredit me, no, them. You, right. You, know? you want to let I try them to say, know. I'll, t I'll answer right. Oh, I mean, I mean, that person and that person and that person. And so hold your thoughts. So I remember to call yeah. on you. Oh. But the other thing they do, too, is if I'm in the middle of a story and somebody's fidgeting or whatever, they're not quite interested, it's your job to go like this and point to whoever's reading or speaking or if we're listening to the announcements. And they do it. They go, you know, they point to whoever's talking because children stand up and share too, right? Yeah. And so if they try to talk to me, I'm like, yeah. And it means understand. we're listening to the person talking. It's a visual cue. Yeah. Because yeah. when I do it, they know, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And of course, they love to do it, they love to be the one that's. Oh down. yeah, yeah. So that's the cool thing too about having the core boards and all of that accessible throughout the day, because the students that need it, or no, the well, they all. I don't like to like. I get you. Discriminate between like yes. they need it, they don't. However, the students good that all benefit them. the most from it are so much more eager to imitate, like pointing to them or utilizing them when their peers are doing it. Exactly. And who loves doing it the most? The the peers. Like, 
I, I talked about this in one of our podcasts, how I had the big core board up and I had that little boy want to just come up. He was like in at circle time, just <laughs> like bursting. Like, I just want to come up there and show you what I know. And this is like four weeks ago or three weeks ago, you know? So I, I brought him up that one time and he started making the sentences with all the words that he learned so far. And then since he did it, other students wanted to do it. And some of my more like complex communicators said, you know, had their hands raised because they just saw him come up and they just knew if I raise my hand, I get to go up. They didn't really understand the whole, oh, I have to put words together. So they would come up and then we would model it again. And they would, but it was just cool to get them up there and feeling confident in that. That's the whole point. And because then they're going to use it independently. Yeah, because now guess what I do? I won't say his name. We'll call him Johnny. But now every circle time in that class, I did it yesterday morning. I said, all right, Johnny, do your thing. You know, like we learned a new word. We learned break this week. So I showed them the visual break and then um, ta we talked. We had a story that went along with it. We talked about break. And I said, okay, Johnny, come make a sentence with break. And he, oh, I want break. And we're like, okay, ta-da. Like now all the students know how they can request a break with three words or they can just do it with one word. But like I have that buy-in mm -hmm. from a peer model. And it's just the more that we are promoting these things with enthusiasm like mm -hmm. oh my gosh oh they learn from each other way better than Hell, they learn from us sorry oops <laughs> heck yes <laughs> oh my well gosh. adults listen to this right i guess i, I mean, mean it's not like we're having children around us it's funny i was just telling sherwood my husband that um it's funny because you, we have a certain vocabulary a certain language a certain style as a teacher and as soon as I get in my car at the end of the day, beep, 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 Oh, don't think you're cutting me off. No, 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 no. But not Mom, so Mom, you got to let that go. <laughs> you got to let it go. got to let it go. Can I tell you a fun thing we did today? Yeah, I think we or should not end. today, this week. I think this is, no, we're good. We wrapped it up. We got the peer models. Let's end on some fun. Well, just fun this, notes. this was exciting. It was all fun. So we've been planting different seeds and Aww. da, 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 da. Well, one of my friends brought in, now I don't know if you know what a Lucy apple is. Nope. They're pink inside. And... I thought it was called a pink lady. Uh-uh. Well, these are Lucy. Anyway, they glow. It didn't work. We what tried to make GMO crap is this? It scared me a little. But it didn't work. But the pink part worked. And so he brought it in and I made such a big deal. And I'm like, oh my gosh, of course there's seeds. So the next day, he brought the apple, so he got to plant the seeds in this little cup. And he brought the apple in the actual bag, so I cut out the picture and I made a visual. But anyway, then the next day, a little friend had a yellow apple. So I said, do you think your mom might send a whole one that we could cut up and share? And she's like, maybe, you know, whatever. And, and of course it has seeds, so they're waiting for Monday. That happened today, and we'll have her plant them Monday. But it it's in our, we have this whole garden going on right now. It's really kind of cool. I love the springtime. I'm really excited because we're going to start doing our springtime stuff. Yeah. I recently got, so this week, my fun story, I got an intern. She's going to be working with me every other Thursday. Nice. So I'm basically going to have her start. She's going to eventually do like the push-in stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited because she's going to get to learn that whole side of things, which yeah. isn't, like, if I think back to my interning days, like, I didn't even know what push-in therapy was. I mean, I had a little glimpse. I will, I'll take that back. I had a slight glimpse, but I didn't realize, like, there was this whole, like, co-teaching SLP teacher model that I could really be taking on. And so I'm really excited for this um, student to get to participate in it and fully be involved in the preschool class. So that's exciting. And she's going to get to do my planting unit for me. Aww. But because I'm at three different sites, last year I modified it. I didn't actually let them plant because they already do that in their classes. So I thought, well, that's a lot of work for me to like bring different planting materials to multiple sites. So I did a sensory bin. And when they came to my center, they got a, a pot and they got to fill it with beans and then we put a flower in it. <laughs> Does that work? So we'll eh. do that, but I do think it would be fun to have like like one center, they all like work together to plant one plant, and then I bring it back every week at circle time and we watch it grow. So I don't know. I have three class, no, six classes of 18, like let's say 18 kids. What's six um, times 18? Too many for me to multiply. See what I mean? 
So that's why I don't think I can't because I push in. I'm not only going to like give the kids that are on my caseload a plant. Like that's not fair. No. So, so I think each. if we do one plant per class. And then they all get to, like, participate. So I'm going to read the story, the planting a rainbow story, because that's a story we read. We talk about, like, the different seasons and what happens during those seasons. And then we'll talk about how to take care, like, the sequence of a plant, so why we take care of it and making sure we water it and all of that. Because they are all going to be planting with their, like, classes. Like, they they have plants. One of my classes is already taking right, care of some plants. There's no, there's not too much of it because it's no. reinforcing in what they missed hearing or seeing or they were absent one day. No, 100%. You know, it's never going to be too much. No, I know. But they, if they're already doing a single one in their other class, this is just a reinforcing. It's just supplemental. Which is I'm not nice. going to not do it. I'm definitely going to do it. I just yeah. want to, I got to figure out how to make it work for, like, well, you could a get a bunch of kids. Well, one, you mean one, like you could get a clear plastic container this size. I have them on the counter now. Did you see those? And you could put five pumpkin seeds, so you, or six, and you could do three of those per class. Well, no, I'm going to bring in like a pot into each class, like three different I know, pots. but if you use a clear thing, they could see the roots when they start growing. And pumpkins grow fast. I know what I'll do. I'm going to have a guest speaker come in and teach. Speaking of visuals, when we go back to it too, like... There are all those different levels, right? Like, we didn't even get into that. We were talking more just, like, basic, like, collaboration, like, having the functional words, having the different things in the classroom. But, like, you know, when I look at what my kids need, there's such a variety. Some need, some respond well to visuals, like, with stick symbols, you know, stick mm -hmm. drawings. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes they need, like, the pictures of the real objects. So that's cool that you have those real pictures. These are the real ones then, they saw. Yeah. And taking. And, and then they, it's exactly like it's not even that they are just real pictures of butterflies like oh yeah like i've seen a butterfly that looks like that but it's like oh i knew that butterfly we like grew that I butterfly grew that butter we yeah. let that butterfly yeah, go on the cool. playground that's it was really super cool. cool so there's just so much attached to that and uh, you know a lot of the kids like when it comes to like learning and stuff like those emotional attachments like they mean a lot especially when you're learning language like a lot of what i'm learning about especially um kids that are autistic or are learning language in different ways like they might learn it in gestalts which means they're learning it in chunks that are attached they have like an emotional like meaning to them which is why some kids repeat phrases of books or mm -hmm. phrases of you know movies or scripts because mm -hmm. they're attached to the emotions that they felt when they experienced that and that's where their language is coming from it's so cool mm -hmm. so having those visuals to help bring it out is really cool she's ready for a cheers no i'm just waiting in case <laughs> no. you're done. i think that's a good in case place you're to, done i no. know i think that's a good place <laughs> to wrap it up so let we'll, us know what you want to hear yeah see you or hear you talk to you on the next one